Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today we're gonna talk about Ghost in the Machine and how to make techno in their style. So what I really like uh, with this guy is they always like, I mean not always, but they often have a like very nice intro or outro and it's always super glitchy and there is a lot happening, nice ambience, there is some low hit, a little bit like a movie trailer, you know, like a always something happened, glitch, SFX, and as well they have uh, a very, very punchy and aggressive kick, which is kind of hard to make. But I'm trying my best and today I'm gonna show you what I've made and explain you how I made everything. And yeah, let's listen to the track. Just maybe bring down the volume a little bit because it's gonna be uh, super loud as everything is mastered so yeah let's listen so you're gonna see there is different parts in the track there is first the intro there is one which is pre-intro and I, I try to kind of make a mix of their track and to make one track so it, it so you have a pretty long intro and then after you have the drop here and some variation so let's see how does it sound <laughs> So there is quite a long going on. I don't know how long the video is gonna be, but I will try to make one part video. But if I see it's taking too much time, I will probably make two part video. So yeah, as you can see, I try to make, usually they don't have like, they have either a track with the kick kind of no fourth floor, but like more like uh, this kind of. Oh. But I, I've mixed them because like this, you can see both and so yeah, let's talk about probably the most important and it's the kick. So here I've freed it because it's my kick is super heavy in process. And one of the reasons is because uh, I've used my rack and it's kind of heavy in process. So if you're not familiar with uh, this rack, I will put the link in the description. And it basically it's based on Punchbox or Kick2. I, I guess you're familiar with this plugin and it's more or less the same. When you open it, you see you have one kick and you have top, tool and click, which are basically uh, sample based uh, things rather than this is operator with a lot of process, but I'm not gonna come back to this and I'm just gonna focus on uh, the sound itself. So 
I just trick until I found something like they have a kick with a lot of mid high frequency like the, the mid is very aggressive so that's what I was looking for and then after you just have to uh, layer And the thing is, there is no really uh, secret because just you're gonna change the pitch of, of one thing and you're gonna come already change. So it really depends the pitch, it really depends the decay if you put a too long decay or no. Just experiment with that, usually it's, it's what I'm doing. And anyway, if you're familiar with punch block or kick two, you know that it's the same kind of. Uh, uh, things you see and you have as well like attack TK uh, you have the pitch of your kick and the, I add pitch attack but you have as well the tune depth and tune that, that you can find uh, on the classic uh, drum machine so that's my bass and the thing is I add gate you cannot hear now because it's not that much process but there is kind of artifact uh, right after the kick so it's just to cut this artifact then I add a bit of saturator. But you're gonna see the way I made the kick is I add an effect and I add another one and there is no like particular effect doing things. It's just like I experiment, things sounds good, I add, I remove and until I found something I like. Then I use this. This is a corpus and I've renamed it Airbase because it's kind of the Airbase plugin from Wave. Kind of adding harmonic in the low. And here I boost this special frequency around 50 Hz. It's just make the kink better. And yeah, so at that point the kick need a way much more mid frequency high frequency and that's why i use uh, my kick punch rack and i even custom it a little bit you can see i have i've had uh, some extra overdrive and saturation to even accentuate i was no if I was bringing too much crunch, was not that not that good in this case. So that's why I had overdrive and uh, saturator. Again, if you're not familiar with this rack, I will put the link in the description. It's just like a parallel uh, process where I have the original and and I have another parallel chain where I uh, add a bit of mid-range frequency with this macro and with some reverb and EQ. Right, then when we've got this, I add some uh, tube distortion. So to get really, they have like a very crunchy uh, kind of vibes. And tube distortion is perfect for that. Then I add another bit of reverb. I use bit reduction, so this little plugin, when you do this kind of techno, you're gonna love it, you're gonna use it a lot. Either in done sample mode or either in bit reduction, it's really what gets you very nasty uh, kind of sound. Here is quite subtle, it's kind of just... It gives this extra punch, even if it's like um, kind of crushing the sound a little bit, but it's, it's just a subtle one and add. And then after I have some rumble. So here I use my rack, I will put the link in the description. And as usual, uh, I've put the reverb, the rumble of beat with the pre delay of the reverb. And that's why I have to... Oh, sorry. I could have kept like this as well, but I like as well to have it. Beat. And then after that is more like for the arrangement purpose. 
uh, this is bit repeat as well and this is for low cut this is for you can see at the beginning everything is cut for the introduction and the bit repeat is basically you know uh, the bit repeat stuff and I just assign it's a, it's a rack I've made for uh, myself actually for my live set and according to how much the value it's activating one or the other so you can see it's either like one eight or then it's gonna deactivate this one and uh, activate this one so I use it here at this part to get I could have used it a bit more everywhere in the track but it's it's really nice to add a bit of variation to your kick uh, you're gonna see what I mean so yeah if you go like around 50 it's a faster one and if you go around here it's like this and that's it for the kick so keep in mind that uh, for this session I've, I've created a session with the master on it and the reason why is because all the sound now like everything is super loud super compressed you can hear when you read the original and if I wasn't doing that like the sound will sound just weak and people will say oh it sounds weak uh, the original they sound way much more louder and much more aggressive so that's why uh, in this case I've created I've made my master and I've created the sound in function. Uh, I don't know how they do honestly, uh, because her sound is like super loud. I, I guess the mastering is even sound design for them. Like they cannot like just send their track to the master or they have to be very good friends with the mastering engineer because everything is so crushed and squashed and I don't know. They probably master their own track, I don't know. But yeah, that's why as well. Uh, at the end so yeah that is for the kick so let's go to the kick hard which is basically the same kick what I've done is I've kind of used it as a, um, a little bit in the same spirit than this FX scent uh, you know this kind of very distorted sound and so here the, the trick is the bit reduction you can hear if I remove it it's a normal kick but with the bit reduction usually it's like this you bring out one and you can even this nice artifact this kind of glitch kind of glitch after it which is really nice and it just sounds really good so what I'm doing in this in the intro I'm just putting it here and there and making respond and answer to each other sound and sometimes I apply a low pass, sometimes no. Uh, you can see with the EQ8, some of them. So that's for the kick. Let's jump into the hats. Hats are pretty basic. They don't use that much ride. I didn't put ride, honestly, but because, you know, ride is always more or less the same. And I, But what I do with their hats... Uh, so they do like like the kind of shaker mode like basic but they do as well like um, you see here like it's the division is even smaller so you get this uh, and that's nice variation uh, to your hat pattern and then I have an open hat which I've kind of done you're gonna hear the the So basically it's like usually it would be like a normal uh, one note on the kick which is low on velocity and one the one off beat which is high and I add as well uh, this double stuff and like this is like and it's just adding something different you know than the than the classic uh, you know usually I will go for something like this other than that, uh, 
and it just makes your hats a little bit more original. Sample from my sample pack and the process is just a bit of distortion with some reverb. Uh, the open hat a bit more decay time to have a, a bit more like a... I want it to be a little bit more noisy and reverb is adding a little bit and I have a little bit more of, of tail and reverb is good for that if you put bring the decay a little bit up. It's making them less dry obviously but as well adding a bit of tail. Rather than the clothes I had I just wanted something very short you can see it's like so see it's not like this like the open hat something very short and that's right there again is just to add a bit of harmonics and here I use a bandpass filter just to give it this kind of uh, I don't know I can say radio effect or I didn't want it to be too bright I wanted to give it a and that's it for the heart then the perks so the perks they have They have usually pack like this. I don't know how to say it. Kind of off beat, but. Oh, they have as well. So here is how to hear of the, with the kickback. Like this. So here, what I've done is uh, I've kept the same delay, but I, I've automated the the timer, and uh, like this is can it add variation as well. And it's, I've done this as well because the kick pattern change, as you can see. Like here is four to floor, and here is like it's different. So it's 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 kind of following the kick pattern as well. And. The way Rather than if I was keeping the two. I don't know, it, it gives a different groove and a nicer groove uh, with this mod. And here is just a perk, so this you have to choose the right perk. I cannot do this. Kind of noisy in the mid frequency, and then I just add. Saturation now, louder. But obviously, that's the delay who is making the job. And yeah, see that I've put the dry weight at 100% because if you get 50, you get a different. But yeah, you get. A nice better and pushing if I can say so with the dry wet like this. And then with a and some EQ. Alright, then all the FX sent. Uh if you haven't seen my video from last Sunday, the Evil Sent video, uh just go to check to explain you how everything does. Here I'm just more gonna talk about the pattern. So I have everything uh, entering kind of to each other with uh, this kick hard as well. And I have some, oops, and I have some glitch effect as well that I'm gonna talk in a minute. And so you can see it with this rack. It really depends. The note here is zero. Here you have A1 F. It's kind of noisy stuff, so it doesn't really matter. But you can see like how things. Are responding to each other the length as well is it can and 
yeah, this you just have to try and and see. You see, like when I was showing the videos, and they, I, I kind of find a new one that I have had, which is kind of more bassy. And that can be used after as well for different purposes. You can here it's more like at the intro to get this kind of of cinematic trailer vibes and to make things going on but then after you can introduce it a little bit more in your track here and there i use it in the break here or you can use like before to drop here uh or to help with the transition as well you see like as a sfx basically that's why i call it fx <laughs> You see this one is the last FX which is kind of cutting everything down. There is like a kind of silence after right after the SFX. And the reason why I've done that obviously is like for dynamic purpose. So what something which is really effective in cinema in the cinema in the movie is dynamics. So before to having an explosion or before to having like a very important hit they always try to uh, have their music, they the people talking at a very low volume. This way, when there is the explosion or when there is uh, the car accident or whatever, it's kind of giving you the impression it has way much more impact. And that's what I've tried to do here, having a very important silent here to then, when I bring the last SFX and I drop the sound, it's get more impact and it's get more powerful. Because if you got something very messy and here, there it doesn't, it will not have the same impact. So yeah, that was a great way to get rid of all of the mess. Silent. So yeah, that's all the SFX sent. And before to talk about uh, these two, I wanna talk about this glitch, which is a kind of a bit similar than this kind of sound. So. I'm not gonna talk long about Glitch, I know there is plugin who do that well, there is uh, probably better tutorial about Glitch, uh, check Mr. Bill, for example, if you wanna find out more how to get this kind of sound, and I found this stuff that he was saying, like, if you use uh, a lot of OTT, you see the, the Predate OTT from uh, Ableton Live in the chain, it creates this kind of weird glitch, and I know it sounds like the joke I've done for the first April, but it's not. this one is really not a joke. So here is without. Oh. So that you sound without, and with the with the whole OT OTT. Ah oh, wait, it's not that, it's not super loud because obviously this had a lot of gain. You see, it was just a basic, and the fact the fact is like this uh, multiband dynamic get artifact, and when you put them in chain, so this is the product that you can find in Ableton, and when you put them in chain, you get this artifact. So that's not, I didn't find out this is Mr. Bill talk about this in one of his video, and that's super dope. And then after I had some bit cross distortion to make it more techno let's say <laughs> and then the thing is it's it's really uh uncontrollable like depending the sample you use it's completely... oh. see this one was something like this so yeah this ott like i don't know how many there is 15 or 20 and then put the bit reduction behind that and you get like crazy stuff. So yeah, if you're looking for this kind of glitch effect, this plus bit reduction is already a good tool to experiment with. You can even as well uh, bring frequency shifter and kind of modulate the frequency as well. You can find interesting stuff and that's after I've trying to put them here and there you know like popping and 
or trying to respond with the other scent. was building this is like having some heat in the low some in the mid some this glitch in the high and yeah making them answer to each other then there as well again there is no secret recipe here you have to try things see what's responding maybe when one is finished starting the other straight away it can't work sometimes uh, you can see here then when this one is finished I already start this one and yeah that's how it's working and here as well. It's not the same, but you can see with the. You're gonna... You can see like it's it's almost finishing here, and straight away uh, there is this one starting at this point. So you got. Getting this nice effect, and yeah, for example, here the glitch is just before the the kick, so it it's making it even more effective. Like, uh, let me just. But if you got this one before, and then straight away you got this one, so now you got. So very high, low, medium, and then after things like you respond to each other, and you get this kind of weird stuff, which is cool for intro or outro, like they do. Uh, I might have abused a little bit here, like it's maybe a bit too much, but. It's to, for the example to make you understand and so one thing they have before to go to the ambience and stuff like that there I've created this so basically what I've done is basically I've took this sand here I've dip it in a lot of reverb and what you can do is uh, to freeze and flatten and you will have something like this and then you know you know you can just like uh, duplicate and reverse this one and then you bring them together and this way it's creating this kind of nice uh, ambience going up and down you can even pan them left to right and it's kind of filling the blank a little bit, especially in this kind of intro. I didn't think about it, but I could have even used it maybe as a as a reverse, like for the break. For example, to accentuate the rise. All right, and then what do we got? We got this FX3, which is basically that's kind of ambience. So I'm gonna put it here, and I'm gonna come back to it later. Here, so yeah, here I have this kind of cinematic stuff. So that's why I was talking about kind of cinematic intro and outro they are doing uh, because you know in the movie trailer and kind of stuff like this is always a lot of tension and uh, cinematic hit like this a lot of whoosh and there is this bank uh, which is perfect for that it's 9 ohm sound uh, this one is a free bank so you can just go and grab it and you have this kind or it's kind of you have as well nice atmosphere if you want I've used one even here as well. It's nice to add a bit of texture and same they have like super nice heat and that can be good as well. I use it actually as a snare roll or one of this one. I don't know number which, which one was the searching. I use it as a snare roll and this is really good for this kind of techno as well and for example this one very subby, I use it here. So obviously you need to have a subwoofer 
to really hear it, but... And yeah, I, I didn't even know, but they got... This kind of... This kind of crazy asset piece as well here, so... If you like this kind of techno and kind of sound, actually this bank can be good for you, they have riser as well. And... Uh, if you want very good bank uh, for this kind of cinematic effects, check uh, Boom Library, B O O M, and they have like super professional. It's like basically the bank that uh, the people from the movie and stuff like that use. They are quite expensive. They are super expensive. Don't expect. I think like each bank is like a hundred pound or an hundred fifty pound. Uh, but yeah, if you can afford very high quality uh, samples. And yeah, so using this kind of cinematic stuff here and there, the same way popping them here, there, and helping add variation, add movement, keep things going, that's important because especially like the intro, it's long and it's... <laughs> ah yeah, but here... <laughs> yeah, basically, actually, here again, I use the bit reduction. Actually, I forgot, but here is even interesting, I have kind of... Add a bit of variation. So... Alright, and that if I remove the regex. So yeah, as you can see, get creative, make you one. And you get something more glitchy, saturated. Yeah, so don't hesitate to take stuff, add bit reduction. And yeah, here I just use it as a noise. You see this kind of mushy effect. Always really effective. That's why they use in the cinema in the movie trailer, so super effective and then i have this snare so basically i didn't really plan it to do that but yeah this one i i didn't use it actually i can remove it but that's just like kind of a snare roll but a bit more in the cinematic mode. But the interesting thing is I use it after uh, because you can see I'm gonna talk about this later in the arrangement but the song they always have like a uh, four bar and then they have like uh, this short break it's just one kick break you see they have four bar and then they have always just one kick and it's <laughs> change quite a lot between each four bar and it's like a lot of changement every four bar and so they put a low cut on the kick to get it like this but they put as well usually a percussion so i use this one i think i pitch it different you see this one is 19 semiton upper this one is a semiton down and i use again different flavor but then like this That's something they do as well. Uh, that's worth noting. And that's the way I use it as well. So then I have the sub at the intro and you can as well, uh, that's the same, that's more like a cinema kind of stuff, but you can use it for your track, obviously for your break. Adding sub is always, always adding tension. And so here I use operator and, oh, where is it here? And it's just sine wave and basically, and, and with uh, distortion. And I kind of play it. So obviously if you don't have sub or something like to really hear the low frequency or even to feel them because this is more like about feeling than uh, really hearing. 
and you not gonna find this useful but it's something that I noticed as well in the original track they have like very low sub frequency in the intro and if you don't have sub basically even if you have a nice good headphone like my uh, I have the DT770 and even with that I, I can barely hear it you hear obviously sub but not the same way that if you have a, a subwoofer so I try to automate to have this sub moving a little bit and this you don't have sub it's quite hard to hear but I automate the volume to kind of bring in up and down the tension with the sub and then come the lead so the lead I use my rack if you have watched uh, the live stream uh, last week as well you can see that it's quite similar basically um, I've made this lead just one or two days before my live stream and I've kind of reused the no reused the same but uh, it's let's say heavily inspired the same kind of vibes that uh, I've created there and then I continue this project but yeah it's, it's kind of I took my peak, send, uh, peak time scent and I sing the I changed the glide maybe at the glide time and add the pitch envelope as well to have this kind of hoover sound as well uh, you see if I this near it's a bit of pitch envelope and with attack the pitch is going up and going down slowly. and then obviously the, because of the glide when and the not who are playing are like two octave you see it's D sharp but two octave upper so you get this glide So if you want to find out more how I made uh, this send sound, I will put the link in the description. You can go to check. I'm not going to explain again. So here in the intro, playing alone, sustain note. And I open the filter slowly, slowly. And then after when I introduce, start to introduce the kick, you start to introduce, you start to hear the, the note. Classic. This this kind of sound, if you like, I've made know, even a video about Hoover sound. I will put the link in the description uh, if you want to know how to make this kind of sound. And yeah, I've made already a couple of videos, so I'm not gonna talk explain again about it. Uh, okay, then come the ambience. Here I use my screams and sand to kind of. kind of get this airy scary ambience again if you want to know how uh, more about this rack uh, I will put the link in the description it's just a long reverb with a lot, very long GK and a lot of dry wet so like this you can this very airy kind of sound Okay, then let's jump into the ambience. So here one thing I have done, obviously there is me on way to do the ambience. There is no like, uh, I don't know exactly how they do, but here what I've done, I resampled the kick basically and I've put it in sampler and I loop it and you can see I play like at 
four different octave so basically when you play C in sampler it's like the original note so it's the original kick but play at different octave upper and obviously when you bring this as well again in a lot of reverb you filter it that's to make it louder and you have your noisy ambience again honestly if you want to find out more about ambience i made a video about uh to make like kind of dark ambience like uh sense sense sns if you want to find out more there is a full video just about that uh here again i use like a kind of arpeggiator note like in 16 note and here i use and in a lot of reverb that's the easiest way if you want to make kind of ambience you see that was a, that i filter the beginning and then we go. let me just bring back the so obviously it's the reverb which is doing the job a lot of dry wet you don't really want the original signal sound you just want like the like you just want the the, the tail of the sound by the p like the the river of the sound and you want a long decay like this you kind of mix all the you you just hear the tail basically it's kind of messy uh, sound overdrive just make it a little bit uh brighter and add a little bit of crispiness as well Then I filtered there was this very nasty re uh, resonance I get rid and then I could have used the side here and I used autopan I pff, don't ask me why I don't know right. So the ambience was really like This two first was more like the noisy one And that's the main one uh, so different thing again is the same is uh, if I remember well I use wave table with some FM if you've seen my video uh, how to make dark ambience is exactly the same way to do it it's basically take a basic you can just take a basic uh, waveform and just by applying a little bit of FM it's kind of making it sound weird so here the interesting thing is obviously it's like the modulation on the filter it really add movement to your pad and avoid it to be like uh, boring so pretty steady straightforward And then with the LF4 you get this movement and then after again eh, is saturation to a bit of distortion the reverb straight away gives this ambience feeling and so I've used as well uh, this two frequency shifter. It was just like to kind of give them a weird. It's kind of pitching uh, down and up. So you go from something like more hairy, happy to something a bit more dark. Then I like it, this one, but was too much in the low, so I say, okay, let's use another one to pitch it up. I like to use frequency shifter to pitch uh, my sound because it's in a different way than a normal pitch. I don't know, it's 
it's super it just works super well for techno and this kind of weird vibe and then i filter everything and then i put this Which is kind of making things mono. Uh, I like this. This is like cabinet from. Uh, I almost never use myself this one, but yeah, it's kind of I don't know making it the pad in the weirdest space, if I can say so. I don't know. It looks like more mono and more dispersed, but still like a weird ambiance in the background. Makes things less messy as well. And then last one, so the drone, the drone has it's a drone, but here's the same. I use this, but in mono. It's like just to have tension to add this buzzing effect. I use my super solid rack. I will put the link in the description if you want to find out more. And what I like as well is. You can see I haven't I don't have like a MIDI a long MIDI like I would do usually like for this one. Here I have playing the note again, restarting again because I have the envelope of the filter which is kind of giving this plucky effect and because of there is a lot of reverb, you get this pump. So double function, this is was like unattended at first, but then I say okay that's cool actually I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, just here is just like a drone to add tension. Could I bring it down maybe? That's it for the drone and then the Atmos. I just used the same I don't I didn't even pitch it. That was just to add variation. I've kind of been lazy on this one, I, I agree. I haven't made it from scratch, but after all it was so let's just quick talk a bit of the arrangement kind of talk a little bit of everything already but yeah the thing is the main thing is always trying to having something changing or always having movement uh for example in this break even in this break Always, you just have to play with things, adding, try what's work, what's not, trying always to think like, okay, maybe I can add a bit more variation on the kick. Uh, maybe I can uh, change uh, the delay of the perk. And why not to add some glitch? You see, I haven't had glitch here, but I could have add, for example, and yeah, at each end of the bar, just a cut on one kick and usually add the percussion to accentuate this and then like it's very brutal change all the time you see it's like you're gonna put the hi-hat and usually like for example what i'm doing usually it will be like more like a kind of a progressive way so that i mean i will keep the hat and add another element rather than here it's really like what they do it's like you have one thing for four bar and then up is cutting and changing to a, a four bar no completely different but to a different kind of stuff and it's always like changing like this uh along the track and all like this they always keep things interesting and yeah it's a really interesting way to uh, arrange the track honestly the way they do things and yeah usually it's, their track is not like overcharged everything is like super loud but everything is always evolving always changing they always have this glitch sent here there and yeah that's how how 
how they do and sometimes they don't do always four to four <laughs> And here I could continue, make another break, and then bring back the four to four kick, and bringing back the the lead end here. Uh, you can, yeah. Really, it's after it's no secret. It's just up to you to arrange things the the way you see them. But yeah, a mix of this FX super saturated scent, a mix of this glitchy sound. A mix a bit of this cinematic kind of effect and uh, whoosh and rise and hit like remember I've done, I said in this library you can find a lot of good stuff making them interact with each other use the beat regex uh, plugin to make them to really crush them saturator and yeah and you got something like in their style okay now uh, mixing honestly I haven't really done anything on the mixing uh, the thing is, honestly, like for example, I haven't didn't session that much because like the kick is so powerful and it has to be so much in the front that it's kind of ducking automatically uh, the scent uh, almost, you know, like it's kind of ducking. It's better if you use sidechain. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, I haven't done any kind of mixing, uh, so to speak, you know, I didn't EQ nothing, just sidechain what I feel needed to be sidechain and I d just like... Why, by the way, this part is... I actually just realized that I didn't bring the ambient sent there, but I even didn't notice. Actually, can be a, a nice variation. Yeah. So about the mastering. So the mastering, I use a kind of. It's a kind of uh, how I can say. That's not how to master in 99% uh, of the time. That's just a very heavy. Uh, squashing mastering obviously I never master my track like this I, I would never do that but for this kind of purpose you have to I uh, kind of one mastering chain was not enough I kind of combined two mastering chains so I have ozone here and I have uh, it's actually the mastering chain from the industrial techno template and I use ozone because I mean master stock Ableton stock plugin are good but for mastering they it's still missing a bit of you see if I remove ozone it works but it's not that without master. I don't know I think I couldn't do this kind of techno without having a master on my chain so uh, yeah I use ozone so I'm gonna show you uh, I use the exciter but basically the, the main purpose was to make things louder brighter and punchier uh, I'm just wondering which section I'm gonna use to, yeah, maybe uh, like not too crazy part because otherwise we're gonna all become completely crazy. <laughs> So, yeah, the thing is, uh, Ableton, like for mastering, it's no, I mean, it depends what kind of music you do, but 
usually it's not the best and I mean I like to use Ozone because I've been using Ozone I, I actually use Ozone 8, I have Ozone 9, I don't, I don't know why I use the 8 but anyway uh, I like stuff like the Exciter, I didn't use the Stereo Imager but sometimes I like to use the Stereo Imager as well and yeah Exciter <laughs> very subtle is just to add this extra sparkling and same with the vintage EQ bring a little bit of brightness you see around 3 kilo and yeah at 1.5 which are usually like uh, the nice frequency for You see the vintage limiter is just adding this little extra things I, I cannot describe but and then I have this which is like <laughs> walking like a like a motherfucker Again, I just bring the pressure down just sitting at minus 0.2 That's yeah, if you wanna learn how to mastering, don't follow this. <laughs> Obviously, it's, this is just like how I've done like to make things super loud. But yeah, and then I yeah, I use my, I, I had an EQ actually. <laughs> just again to accentuate this mid high frequency because they are very prominent in this kind of techno. And so that's what I boost the most. And because it's the way you're gonna have your kick very punchy and and really like the kick in their track is really like uh, yeah in your face and very super important uh, more than the scent more than anything else is is the kick you know you, you take that straight in your face and yeah then I've been lazy I just use because again you know like it was just to make things super loud louder so I just like drop this it work I might have to. <laughs> to EQ to rebalance get rid of this. see this two frequency I didn't like it and same here and yeah saturation and limiter So yeah, pretty savage honestly, but that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. That's it for now guys, thank you very much for watching, it was a bit of a long video, but honestly there is so much going on that uh, I couldn't make it shorter. And the good things is the project will be available for free to download, link in the description, don't forget please to support me in any way you can like sharing on facebook on the forum on groups on instagram whatever just share like the video and enjoy the template thank you very much for watching guys and see you soon guys bye bye